jerk. And this is The Big Show, your preeminent source of all obscure 80s and 90s pop culture references smoothed over the battle boat tip. And today, we've got a good one for you with a fair warning. This is going to come down to the very last seconds of the game, so sit back, unbuckle your brain, and join me in welcoming out today's guests. They are the Tech Tree Tier 7, Pan-European Destroyer, and best brand new destroyer of this update. Give it up for Oscar Yachtland. Oyster Yachtland, or Oyster Goatland if you're so inclined. The destroyer that's at the tippity top of its tree and still only halfway there, what with the lack of tier 8 and legendary tier ships completing the tree. But if you have been grinding this line or were lucky enough to get the scone in a crate, well for now, this is what it's all for. And what do I think? I'm in love, woo! <laughs> well, maybe not full jumping on Oprah's couch in love, but I really, really am having fun in this ship. How much fun? Almost enough that it allows me to forgive my teammates for throwing matches. But before we get into the nitty gritty, let me get the commander and modules up on the big screen. We have Jersey Von Jovi, Slippery When Wet, Old Bay Seasoning, Great on Seafood and Destroyers, and the Big Billiam Sims. And I'm using a combination of AA mods, prop mods, concealment mods, computer mods, and that should give you a good idea of why I like this ship so much. That and the fact that I'm taking out of Cleveland right here. Ooh. But the name of the game for this ship is Versatility. And there are so many ways you can build this ship to match how you want to play. Originally, I was using Stig Hansen of the Great Northwestern, and I was going all in on torpedoes. But last week, I switched over to Lil J and moved mods around, and I have settled on this. Now, the reason being is that with this, I get a 5.1 concealment, which will aid in positioning for any gunfights. We've got about 3,000 extra health, which is an additional 20% more than stock. And we still have the fast cycling guns. We still have the quick reloading torps. I'm not usually one to focus so heavily on being pretty decent at everything instead of great at one thing in particular. But if a ship is designed to be pretty good at everything, then I kind of feel I want to make it even better at everything. I don't know, jerk. That sounds a bit of a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none kind of thing. Yeah, a little, but same as with any ship in this game, your own personal skill is what you use to make up for any shortcomings. Now, I'm sure a fair number of you clutched your pearls when you saw me actually open water gunning at Cleveland. Am I insane? A destroyer willingly get in a gun battle with a Cleveland? Well... With this ship, to get the most out of it, you need to use what the Ouija gods gave you. Trying to rely solely upon torps won't work, you just don't have a high enough alpha strike. Yeah, you can't rely solely upon guns either, there's not a high enough DPM. But if you use your Wonder Twin powers to activate both at the same time, then you can have your Constructicons take the form of Devastator and start getting that damage over time. Keeping your eyes peeled for ships that have used their damage control, or baiting ships to use it and then either stacking fires, floods, or if you're lucky, both. This is not me saying that you can steer this boat with one foot while your hands make fresh strawberry margs either. The skill floor on this ship is pretty high. The skill ceiling, let's just say for some the sky's the limit, for others <laughs> <laughs> the limit's the sky. But if you have it in your personality type to play Russian destroyers and give up the smoke for a heal, or play the French destroyers because you don't need no stinking smoke, then I think you will greatly enjoy this line as well. So, this match. This is interesting, and that's going to be reflected in the end results, but the almighty matchmaker spawned me on the flank with another destroyer, and normally that would be frustrating, but Greece is a map that I actually appreciate that because there is very nearly zero reason for a destroyer to get on the B-cap. They can't spot, they can't do much, and if I'm in a cruiser or a battleship and I spawn center, I will always get on the cap. And we did have a King George do that to start this match, but they uh, ran into a school of fish they weren't expecting. And with that, the rest of our team has decided to overload 
A. All right, basic plan of action. Get rid of this Vladdy Vostok and then flip this cap. And we do get a flood on them right here and they're going down, 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 and yoink. <laughs> in the Massachusetts defense, I'm sure those shells were already in the air. So we have this low health Weimar up here. We have a full health Massachusetts that's been on a three hour tour of the northern edge of the map. And we have a Leon heading this way. Hmm. So how do we want to play this? Well, I am really thinking now about shooting this Weimar to gun them down, but that Leon, they may have HE loaded. I don't want to give up all my HP yet. So I'm going to play this a little bit safer right now and just try to secure this cap rather than letting anybody know exactly where I am. And um, you think this Leon's going to sail in a straight line? That's the real question. You know, sometimes you just have to put all your eggs in one basket. And my spidey sense is telling me that that Leon's going to sail in a straight line. Now, again, very tempted to shoot. However, if I get spotted, there's a good chance that people may turn out or change their direction or they may shoot me and I want to complete this cap. Now we've got a Bismarck heading in this way. So not bad positioning really by either team, but oh no, we just lost our Ognavoy to the south and that essentially guarantees that our Colorado to the south is going to go down as well. And uh, yeah, Leon does sail in a straight line. So that's two yeah, ships sunk. sunk. Hmm. Now that we know that our uh, ships are going to go down to this. Oh, we just lost a hipper. Okay, maybe things aren't looking so good anymore. Sure, we do have the cap control. And, uh, you know, I'm, we still have two destroyers to their two destroyers. I don't know what the health on either of their destroyers are. But our Maz, way up to the north, um, that's not really helping me. <laughs> and really, that's what you kind of need to be doing. Yeah, I know it's tempting to go out there and sink the big bad battleship, which uh, looks like it's going after that Massachusetts. But if that Maz were down here with me, I just I question if we could do uh, a bit more later in this match. So anyway... Bismarck's passing through here and you're gonna see they are keeping a very steady pace and I'm holding my torpedoes in the exact same spot where it was marked uh, Because if they should drop spot, that's where I'm going to torp anyway, but they are picked up again and uh, Yeah, I get the feeling that they too will be sailing in a straight line And the reason I think that is because where can they turn? They can't turn out because there's land there that just doesn't make sense that a player would do that and unless they have their hydro on, I don't think that they're going to be able to spot these in time and react. So if I can get this battleship sunk, then maybe we're not in such a bad spot. Wait, where did our Maz go? Well, what do you know? He did, in fact, get sunk by the battleship to the north. So four on three, somebody is capping B. Now, I'm a little concerned that this could be the Weimar. The Weimar can definitely put the smack down on me, even if it is very low health, but it might also be a destroyer, but which destroyer? <laughs> the red team has a Summers. Okay, not the Weimar, and there is the Summers. So let's go ahead and start gunning these down. And you see, I'm turning down to the south so I can have some land to protect me. And in case of emergency, be able to drop spot and break line of sight and potentially have my teammates be able to support me here. It is now just me and a Bismarck, but I think we're going to be able to gun down this Summers right here. And we, in fact, do. And this is going to be our fourth ship sunk, and I'm kind of thinking here, boy, I hope that our Bismarck has some health left because we need them to be able to tank some damage here for me. In that whole sequence, we did see that our Colorado to the south was sunk by the Z-35. So we know kind of where that Z-35 is. Let's see the Bismarck's health. Not too bad. I am telling them to get back though. Please get back. They are going to be taking a golden shower from the Weimar. There is a battleship up there. And if they were to just stay back here a little bit, they might be able to use their sonar to spot the Z-35 for me. Might be able to. I mean, I'm going to ping on this map. We know that this is the Z-35 now, right? 
they are contesting this base. We have a very good idea of where the Z35 is. I'm going to ping right there so my Bismarck knows. Yo, dog, there is a destroyer right there. Please be aware of that and do not do anything too crazy. I'm reversing to see if I can't get line of sight on them. Though it looks like the Z35 is going for a YOLO Torp run. Uh, and of course the Weimar does get a high caliber there because our Bismarck is still marching forward ever so slowly. And I'm hoping, just hoping that the Z35 will be spotted by our Bismarck. Maybe. Maybe I will be able to shoot them. And uh, they are going to get spotted. But not until after I drop these Torps off. Well, I'm also putting these torps here as kind of zoning in case. I don't know where the Massachusetts is. That's a very popular spot where the Massachusetts might be coming through. You see there they are, and I'm like, oh, might work. But there is the Z-35, full health. Full health, too. So I've got to start doing uh, some stuff that's a little bit crazy. I can see that our Bismarck, oh, my Lord, are they going to take torps here? If they take torps here, this is going to be very difficult for me to come back from. But they don't take any torps okay maybe i can get within will to rebuild range yes i hate that skill until it benefits me but as it is i don't like where this bismarck's positioned anyway and if i were to go over there oh the z35 is back on the cap there they are there they drop spot again i need to just get rid of this weimar so that's what i'm gonna do time to open up the guns and get this Weimar out of this game as fast as possible because I need them gone for me to have a chance. There is pretty much a 0% chance that I can withstand the barrage from a Weimar, a Z35, and a Massachusetts all at the same time. So I just have to risk it to get rid of the Weimar right here. And just look at how much health that takes off. Just about a quarter of my health right there. But we do get cranking 408 in the Ulster Yachtland, so... That really doesn't matter though, does it? Because we want to get the win here. And so how are we going to do this? Well, we know the Z35 is on the south side of this B cap. And we know that the Massachusetts is now spotted over there. So can we engage the Z35 before the Massachusetts will be able to assist them? That is the plan. There's a very good chance that this player is playing overconfidently because, uh, you know, that's what people do. They're like, hey, it's two on one. We got this. So I'm trying to hopefully be able to use that to my advantage. And will we get spotted? If we are, that player is trying to play and we are. Oh, they've got a full stealth build. Who plays Z35 like that? Anyway. Getting my gun cycling, right? We do have about 8,000 health. They look to have about 15. Go ahead and get our torps down. Even though, what's that going to do? <laughs> you never know. It may do something. They're going to use their hydro here pretty soon to get me spotted. We all know this is the whole gimmick of the Z35 is they can uh, stealth hydro. So, yeah. Oh, well, you know, we do get a torp here. Can we get another? No. All right. So I've got to get out of range of their hydro and then be able to somehow gun them down. But oh, look at all these <laughs> hits that I'm taking. This is a problem. However, I'm out of their range now and we can start shooting back. We are. Yes, we are hitting them and we had a pretty good idea. They were there because their engines were knocked. But now we can see that they're reversing. So we've got to kind of try and aim where we think they are and blind fire them while I take this fire. Uh, I am saving my damage control just in case I get another fire on me, but we aren't getting any more hits on them and we are down to the last few seconds. They are up by 40 points, but if we can sink this, that would switch the score by 50. So there they are. Let's get the shots going. Oh man, come on. We've got one fire. We've got two fires. I just need to dodge this salvo, but I don't. <laughs> oh. All right, let's see this scoreboard. 2,448 base XP and a loss for what shoulda, woulda, coulda been a very good game. And GG to both the blue and red team. But it looks like the red team 
they were just a bit better. Either way, it was fun, and that's all that we really want anymore. And that's gonna wrap it up for this one. If you are confident enough in your abilities that you don't need no stinking smoke, give this video a like. If your destroyer turrets have never fired a single shell, give it a dislike questions comments leave them down below and you know we are getting very close to the new tier 8 ships and if you want to see those make sure to hit subscribe thanks for watching folks i will get back out there for another one and we will talk then